Adobe Photoshop is like one of the legendary Blue Angels Navy jets. With proper care and maintenance, its precision and ability will astound you. The performance area of the Preferences menu is where you go to decide whether you power Adobe with jet fuel or with 87 octane from your local gas station. To get to the performance menu, either go up to the Photoshop menu here if you're on a Mac, select Preferences, and then Performance. If you're on a PC, you'll find this exact same menu here in the Edit menu down by Keyboard Shortcuts and Menus. And alternately, you can press Ctrl or Command K. Then just go over here to the side and click on Performance. There are four separate areas here. We covered this briefly in the Preferences Overview, but we'll go a little bit more into depth. Memory usage. Photoshop helps us out by giving us an ideal range, which you'll see here. Now, this is basically based on what they think the amount of RAM that the rest of your computer needs to operate effectively without crashing or without slowing down Photoshop. I typically leave this around 70%, which is the default, unless either A, I'm only using Photoshop, which is a rarity, in which case I'll crank it up to maybe 80%, because I don't have to worry about any background operations running. I don't have to worry about any other programs running. And the only other time that I'll change it from 70% is if I'm using several programs at once, which is not a rarity. So I'll drop it then down to about 60, depending on how many programs I have open, maybe even 50. And the reason this is, is because now you're sharing the RAM between Photoshop, and After Effects, or Premiere, or Flash, or whatever else you have open. So you want to take into account that each of these programs is going to need RAM. Again, you have to share your total amount of RAM with all of these programs. If you don't set this properly, the problem is that switching back and forth between the programs, there's information that each of these programs saves in the RAM. So it could get really cluttered, you'll find that your computer slows down to a grinding halt. And in some cases, uh, I know in Windows, it'll crash your operating system because Windows itself needs RAM to operate. In other cases, it could crash just the program you're working with. There's another strange thing that happens, which is sometimes you'll be working in a program and things will stop saving. Now, I don't know exactly what the cause of this is, but I suspect that it has to do with improper memory management. Keep in mind, if you're opening more than one program and you're gonna be going back and forth between Premiere and Photoshop and After Effects and Flash, just make sure that you take into account how much memory each one of these programs needs to operate effectively and share it between the programs that you're using. So I'm gonna bring this back up to 70 for now. The next, well, 75, and the next thing we'll talk about is the history and cache. This is something I briefly went over in the preferences. We'll start with default. Default is a great option. If you don't know what to set this at, just leave it as default. Tall and thin and big and flat. What this refers to is the number of layers in your image and then the size of the image. So tall would mean that you have multiple layers somewhere in the order of 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 layers. And thin would be a small image, say a web size or any of the US paper default sizes that you'll find when you open a brand new document. That would be considered tall and thin. Big and flat, on the other hand, occurs when you're working in poster size or if you draw comic books, will typically go twice up, which turns out to be 11 by 17 relatively big, probably not going to have a lot of layers, or if you're designing something for a billboard. Now we're talking really, really big. However, you don't necessarily have that many layers, so they consider it flat. All right, most of the time that I work, I work in web sizes, with the rare exception of illustrating sometimes, which I'll go big and flat. So most of the time, I'm going to click on tall and thin. That's going to automatically lower the cache levels and leave me where I need to be. History states, 20 seems to be a good number for me. If you have to undo more than 20 levels, you've made some serious mistakes. One of the ways to prevent this is to frequently take snapshots of your drawing. And you can do that. Let's come over here to history. Right here is this camera. That'll take a snapshot. That'll save a new state right in here. 
So if you have something the way you like it, and then you're going to go off and you're going to try some experimentation, you know, erase a bunch of things, take a snapshot of it first, that'll save you a lot of headache in the end, and then you'll only need 20. Down here to scratch disks. What a scratch disk is, when Photoshop runs out of memory to store information, it will actually use space on your hard drive. You want to leave this set to active, and in certain situations, you may even want to designate a second drive, although I don't recommend it. If you're using a PC, I recommend that your scratch disk is not the same drive that Photoshop is running on. In fact, if you're working at all, I recommend, especially on PC, that you save all of your programs to your C drive, which would be your active Windows drive, and everything that you're working on, you save to a secondary drive. This way, if anything happens to your operating system, you can erase your C drive, your main drive, and all of your files are stored on the D drive, or whatever other drive you designate. So now you can reinstall your operating system or otherwise repair it. GPU settings. This is important. Up until recently, Photoshop has run exclusively using the processor in your computer. Recently, they've changed that, and now you'll see here, Enable OpenGL Drawing. What this does is it uses your graphics processor, so your video card, to divide up the work between your graphics card and your processor. So several of these functions that Photoshop has built in now utilize your video card, which allows you to get extra performance because you're breaking up the tasks between two separate processors. The other thing to note is video cards today are getting extremely advanced and each video card is essentially a mini computer. It has its own processor, it has its own RAM. So you want to make sure that you have an OpenGL compatible video card. Don't mess with the advanced settings. <laughs> that's pretty much, that's pretty much where, where we're going from here. Leave this on normal, hit OK, hit OK in the main panel, and that's it for the performance menu. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and send any questions that you may have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.